So based on the questions and comments I've received on some of my past videos, I'd like to address the myriad of options that there are when choosing a rail and or general structure for building your own miniature railway. So as you see before you, there are many, many different steel sections that exist that could be used as rail. Now, of course, this here is about an 80 pound rail that would be used on either narrow gauge or uh, main line service. Granted, usually uh, track nowadays or, or rail nowadays is about 100, 120 pound cross section. Um, so again, this is about five inches tall. And unless you have access to a scrap yard full of it, I would strongly advise against using something this big for the gauges that we're talking about. So minimum gauges that are anywhere from seven and a quarter through about maybe 24 inch gauge. I wouldn't go much bigger than that with what I'm about to, uh, with, with all of the options that I'll go over. Mainly because of, uh, it, it all varies based on the weight of the rolling stock you're planning to put over it. And also the sort of, um, just the, the use case for the railway. To start off, I'd like to address this group here, which is angle iron. Now angle iron is very, very common and it comes in a myriad of sizes and thicknesses. What I have here is some one inch by one inch equal leg angle. So that's one inch by one inch. This is inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter and two inch by two inch and two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Now these are all, these three are eighth inch thick sections. And in this case with the angle profile, Eighth inch is plenty strong enough to carry, well, I'd say, medium sized rolling stocks. Something of the caliber of the cards that I've shown on this on this channel here would do well on these uh, on this size of track. It would be plenty strong enough. Workability wise, these, while they're easy to uh, cut to, they're not as easy to bend. As, is that with the opposed axes, it's of course difficult to bend something that's fl or easy to bend something that's flat. But once you add this other web 90 degrees to it, it's very hard to bend it along that axis, which makes it, of course, very good for strength, but means that it's difficult to bend. So also another hang up with this is that in order to attach it to ties or, well, anything else that you need to set it down on, you would need to either weld something to it or drill holes through it in order to place a screw through it because as, as you'll see with other shapes that I'm gonna go over, there's nothing on this side to bolt against. You could overlap like that with either a screw or a spike, but this side remains a problem. That's angle. Again, very plentiful, comes in all shapes and sizes, or well, all sizes, thicknesses, etc. So the uh, next thing that we have here is a small piece of box tube. This was the only little scrap piece that I could find in my collection. So box tube is also rather plentiful, comes in all manner of uh, dimensions and thicknesses. This is just a piece of half by half by about maybe probably eight gauge or something. But um, anyway, the advantages of this is that they have a nice rounded profile and that is very close to the rounded profile on the head of actual rail. So people like it for that respect. And it's also uh, rather easy to work. It's usually because of the, it's very strong for its weight because of the, uh, the box profile means you can use a thinner steel and still get a lot of strength out of it, much like pipe. Now, the problem with this is that being hollow when you bend it, it has a tendency to collapse. So you will generally need a proper set of rollers that to uh, that will hold it and make gradual bends along it. So you don't want to put this in a vise and, and uh, lean on it or else it will probably kink or otherwise buckle. So, and again, with the uh, fixing to ties, you can't put a spike on either side. So you have to weld a plate to this and uh, that's pretty much the only, or, or weld hole ties to it. So just have track panels made up. So that's box tube. Looking to what I'm using now, 
is I'm currently using this inch and a half by half inch by eighth inch thick channel. Now I've thought about using this for a while and uh, I came upon it because it was, um, it's like angle in that it comes in many shapes and sizes, or I keep saying shape, it's one shape, but many sizes, many thicknesses. And you can see here, this is a piece of three inch by inch and a quarter by about three sixteenths thick. Now I use this stuff for cart frames, the chassis, etc. So this is very useful, but I'd say based on the size difference, unless you're doing much heavier rail, um, this is only for carts and other things. You don't want to use something this big for your rail. It'll be very expensive and it'll be harder to work. Now, the good thing about channel is that because it has this, if you draw a box around it, a bounding box, it's a rectangle. Now that means that if you're bending it and you have rollers or a vise or whatever, that unlike unlike angle here, which will want to kick and roll, if you if you clamp it like this and try and bend it, it'll probably want to pop out like that. Whereas this, if you clamp it, it has these two contact surfaces. So those two points of contact means that it just has a stable place to uh, sit on your roller or bending surface of choice. So again, disadvantage, you can't spike on either side. So if you're using a spike, you won't have something else on the other side. You'll have to uh, weld a plate to it as I've done here and as I've done in many of the other track sections. I've talked about in the past placing two washers on either side as such so that this of course it drops so that this washer here acts as a bolster and this washer here holds it down and this will prevent it from uh, kicking out from under this washer here so this washer acts as a sort of uh, stop for the uh, for the other washer to push up against and this ends up being a rather secure connection without having to weld or drill holes or do anything. Now what I also would like to address is what I've used for rail in the past which is this wonderful T-bar fencing. Now this has a few disadvantages as well but the advantages first off are that it is symmetrical right left so you can spike on either side so you don't really need what uh, well you should probably have at least some manner of washer but you can put you can overlap with both sides and that's all well and good and quite easy to throw down the disadvantage with stuff that's meant for fencing is it has these bumps on the bottom which they're meant to uh, hold up the fencing material that's placed on the fence as such, so to keep it from sliding down. Now that's fine, but the problem when laying them down on ties is that you need to cut a groove or else these are going to rock like that on your ties. Not be very good for, uh, for stability in any case. So you either have to drill holes for each one of these to sit in or just um, router out a slot in the ties such as this example of a tie here so this would be placed like that and have a slot it can be narrower than this one but there's your uh, your clearance for for the bumps and also another disadvantage with this stuff is uh, especially the ones that you find in the store nowadays are much harder steel and will tend to snap when bent and also because of their profile it's it's uh, tends to kick when trying to bend, so there's no real uh, easy way to bend this in terms of, uh, you need a roller that's going to account for the protrusions on the sides. So, anyway, that's T-post. There's also T-bar, which is available in a myriad of sizes as well. And it has the same bending issues, but it tends to be the same steel as uh, angle. It's not as available as angle. I've run into problems getting it. Um, this is a piece of uh, just inch tall, inch wide um, T. 
with this there's no bumps on the bottom you can just lay this right down on a tie and it'll be fine still has the advantage of being able to be spiked on either side another downside with tees that there's uh, with um with angle and t and if you're going to use flat bar same issue with flat bar is that there's not much of a head for your wheels to run on and this can tend to wear a groove in your wheels because proper rail has this nice wide flat head for rail for the the wheels to sit on but of course if this is your wheel flange the uh, flat will tend to dig into that corner especially as you're going around curves and the uh, flange of the wheels is digging against this very narrow surface so that's a disadvantage that i forgot to mention with T-bar, flat bar, and angle. Channel, of course, has a head on it. So finally, for what I have here, is we have proper profile miniature rail. This is one inch tall by 15 sixteenths wide. Now this is generally meant for seven and a half, seven and a quarter inch gauge live steam track. If you're using it for a larger gauge than that, it can be a little bit small. It's plenty strong, but you'll run into issues with your wheel flanges. This is only about a quarter of an inch tall head here, so if you can see that there. It's only about half an inch head and quarter of an inch thick. So the overall height means that if you're using something as large as this, you may run into clearance issues here with depending on the size flange of wheel you're using. Now, of course, you can use smaller fasteners, such as this one here. Gives you more clearance, but again, these are smaller fasteners, so they won't hold as well. So, on the topic of fasteners, is anything from about a... Uh, what is this? A... Um, 3 sixteenths through quarter to 3 eighths lag bolt are my current favorites for hardware. I'm using 3 eighths. This is a bit longer than the ones that you've seen me install, but generally longer is better. This is about a uh, two and a half inch lag screw. So those can be used in combination with round washers or these nice beam washers that are tapered. Now the taper also helps with, even if you're using something like regular rail, you can see that it takes up the tapered part of the foot there. So regular railroad spikes are not going to be much use here unless you're using very large, uh, unless you're using actual railway sleepers and because they'll probably split anything smaller in terms of wood. Um, smaller spikes like this are not easy to come across either. They are supplied at um, rail suppliers and all of that. They they are available, but again, you're going to have to pay for them. Um, what's more available, but again, not the best, is uh, these landscape spikes. They're much, much too long for your application, though they probably would help in holding the uh, ties to the ground because they would go through the ties and stick into the soil. Now one last proper profile I'd like to mention is the 12 pound rail. Now 12 pound rail I do not have any of, but it is two inches tall, two inch wide base with a one inch wide flange or a one inch wide head. Now this is sort of, I'd say the ideal rail for anything of about 15 inch through 18 inch gauge. You could probably, well, okay, through 24 inch gauge. Uh, you could probably still use it for 36 inch gauge, but um, probably not anything wider than that. So again, it's proper profile rail. It's not easy to find if you can come across it. It's very good. I've seen other people's railways that have it. It's just about ideal for this application. But again, if you don't want to shell out the money to buy it because it is one of the more expensive options, then um, some of these other options will certainly uh, certainly suit the uh, suit your needs. So, in terms of uh, other profiles that you can achieve, is uh, if you're not averse to a lot of welding, you can take two channels and put them back to back and weld them and end up with a narrow eye profile, which also works. It just gives you a bit of a wider head of this the. Uh, 
at the top. So you can also take T-bar and if you had a small rectangular flat, you could build up, you could weld it to the top here and build up a similar profile to the uh, one inch rail or with something that's with a T-bar that's bigger, you could weld up something that would be closer to 12 pound rail with a bigger T and a bigger flat rectangular bar on top. But again, that takes welding over the whole length. The best ties that I've come across are these um, four by about three landscape timbers. They're very cheap. They come in uh, eight foot long sections. There's about, well, they can uh, sometimes be a bit split or uh, otherwise lower quality. They do come treated, so they won't rot immediately. And uh, they're, of course, thicker than a regular 2x4, so they have a bit more uh, a bit more thickness for screws to uh, hold fast into. So these are the best that I have come across. Um, you can always use regular 2x4s, but I'd recommend these landscape uh, edging boards. Another thing is that um, with them coming in 8-foot pieces, they uh, conveniently chop up to 2-foot pieces. That's what I currently, uh, you, you don't have to uh, waste any length in uh, cutting them down. You just get nice 2-foot two uh, two ties out of them. Now you can also do that with just regular squared off 4x4, four four, which will probably be a little bit stronger. It's not rounded. They generally split less, though this one's a bit worse for wear. Um, it's more expensive, but they're a little heavier, a little bit more sturdy. So they're an option as well. They come in multiples of two feet, so cutting them down to two foot ties is also no problem. So anyway, that's a bunch of the different profiles of uh, material that I've considered and used for uh, making minimum gauge railways. And uh, again, I'm no expert in the field, but these are my own observations and my own uh, sort of my own approach to it. And uh, I hope it's been somewhat useful in terms of uh, informing your potential projects and um, what you choose to go forward with. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.